Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and I am here to address one of a very commonly asked question from a lot of our viewers and that is on medical statistics. So a lot of you find medical statistics difficult and as always at EduSearch Clinics we will try to simplify the concepts so that it is easy to apply in your research. So the initial few videos are going to be on understanding the different aspects or nomenclature of statistics so that when we discuss core topics, the terminologies don't make things difficult. So my claim for statistics is that medical statistics is easy. It is not as difficult as is portrayed or as is felt by the students. So the students routinely claim that statistics is not easy. Now, remember this slide for upcoming lectures because in one of the presentation that we see, we are going to see that this is a way that statistics is applied, right? A claim that statistics is easy and counter claim that statistics is not easy is a form of hypothesis testing and this we will see in upcoming lectures. Why this testing is required? Because only one of us can be right, right? Either it's easy or it's not easy. And these are the kind of questions that you can solve by help of statistics. And what we are going to do is we are not going to memorize much in this series we are going to understand more, right? So minimum memorizing and maximum understanding. And what we are going to discuss is just the practical aspect. I am not a statistician, I am a surgeon. And so what we are going to discuss is the basic concepts with practical and relevant examples. So as you saw, the today's topic is on understanding some of the nomenclatures of statistics. So let us see some examples on how this applies and then we will see what term to be used where in statistics. So in the first example, we are taking our routine life and most of you may know him. This is Sachin Tendulkar, one of the greatest that we have seen of our time. But what is this red box? Of course, I'm not here to teach cricket. I am here to teach this box, right? This box is basically statistics. So those of you who are interested in cricket know these statistical values. And it is these values which makes Sachin the greatest player that he is. Of course, he's a very good human being as well. But when we discuss Sachin as a player, it is these numbers. And these numbers are basically his statistics. Have we all been to a coffee shop? The answer is yes. And most of you have seen this kind of menu, right? There are different options. There are different charges. So there is a tabular representation of menu in a coffee shop. And this is something that all of us have seen, right? Now, as I said, I will be giving medically relevant examples. So in example three, this is also something that most of you would have seen if you have had your medical ICU postings, right? These are the four different readings of a patient, right? These are the four different ICU monitor readings of a patient. And again, the numbers that you see here can be compared, can be studied. And all of this is basically a part of medical statistics. So now these are three very different examples, right? One data shows Sachin as a great player. The other is a restaurant menu. And the third is an ICU monitor taking readings at four different times, right? What is common in all this? So if we remove the headings of the numbers, do the numbers mean anything? For example, what does this 664 mean if you don't have this column, right? What does 34,357 mean if you don't have this column, right? So the point to highlight is that these numbers make sense 
only if they have a heading. A similar thing applies to all. If in this monitor here, we remove this column, what do these numbers mean? We don't know, right? So this means that there are two important things in each of these examples, which we should know if we want to know the statistics of that example. Okay, I would repeat again. If I want to make sense of this 75, I have to know that the 75 is the hard rate, right? So there are two important things to note for each number, okay? Two important things to note for each number. So that is why I gave the example of hard rate. So now if you see in these four different readings, there are four different values of hard rate, right? There are four different values of heart rate. So now if I want to see response to a treatment based on heart rate change, I can see these four different values of heart rate, right? Keep this point in mind. Similarly, if I know this column, the right hand column, I know that 664 is the total number of matches that Sachin has played, right? So 664 matches. So matches give you an identification of the number 664. Similarly, the total runs scored by searching in 664 matches is 34,357, right? So now that number makes sense that it is the total runs scored by searching in 664 matches, right? So what is common to all these is that there is a variable on which we get data, right? So here the variable is heart rate, then the data is 75, 78, 82, 75. If the variable is coffee, then we get different types of coffee as data, right? If the variable is matches, we know that 664 matches were played by Sachin and the scores in each of those matches will be considered as data, right? So taking the example of Sachin, runs scored in 664 matches. How can you tabulate this? Runs scored will be the heading and these may be some of the runs that he has scored. So now to tell you what variable is and what data is, the heading of the column is a variable, right? So in this example, runs scored by Sachin is a variable and the number of runs in each match becomes data, right? So this is a very important point. I know it may sound trivial, but in statistics, the first point is defining a variable and defining data, right? So if we want to analyze the greatness of a cricket player, the variable may be runs scored and the data will be different runs scored in different matches. So now in all our three examples in different aspects of our life, we know that matches, runs, 50s, 100s are all variables. Data on the other side. Similarly, the yellow circle that has just appeared on your screen are all variables. So heart rate is a variable, arterial BP is a variable, SpO2 is a variable, right? And the numbers that you see are data, right? The numbers that you see are data. Again, I would give you a master chart that was prepared by me for one of my articles. Here, I would give you 10 seconds to tell me what is variable and what is data. Okay, so now you know that age is a variable and 55, 68, 35, 48, the parameters that you see below the age is data, right? So your headings of the column will be the variables and the values that you assign to that variable will be data, okay? So now two things are very clear. What is variable? What is data? Now coming to the third 
key term that we are going to utilize very commonly in our videos is observation okay so a single value in a data set data is plural okay singular of data is observation what does that mean if i ask one patient what the age of that patient is and the patient says 55 isolated number 55 as the age of a patient is an observation okay however if we include the entire master child values under the variable age it is data so now coming to summarizing what we have learned today and yes these videos are going to be short and sweet so that we don't burden ourselves with medical statistics but believe me in 20 to 30 videos that will come in this playlist most of your concepts of medical statistics will be very clear right so whenever we want to do a statistical analysis this is the framework that is followed okay the first point is to define the things that we are studying okay so if we are studying patients the common variables are age gender comorbidities and so on right the values that come under each variable together in plural form is known as data right the value of a single person that comes under a variable is observation right so that is the definition that we have to know whenever we want to do a statistical test or analysis so define once you define your variables you define your observations and you define your data then the next step is to collect data organize data visualize data and analyze data this is known as a dacova framework or the dcova framework don't worry about this if you can't follow it at the moment in this video all you need to know is what is variable what is data and what is observation right in upcoming videos we will see what is population what is parameter what is sample what is statistic so there are 10 15 common terms in statistics that you should know if you don't clear these basics at this point they will create problems when we study the statistical topics in detail so i am dedicating the first two three videos on just clearing the common terminologies that are used in statistics and the very basics that you should know before starting to read statistics right i hope you like this video and the approach to statistics in this series if there are any queries or any suggestions do feel free to comment in the box below or leave a mail at learn with edusers@gmail.com thank you mm -hmm.